In Sky 4, only on WIFF News 4. Now, WIFF News 4 presents For the Record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Nigel Robertson. This morning, we are talking cycling. The weather is warmer, and more and more cyclists are out enjoying the upstate's trails and roadways. We'll speak with the Greenville sprint Spinners and a cycling pro as well. But joining me first this morning is Frank Mansbach of Bike Walk Greenville. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. Tell me about Bike Walk Greenville. Well, we've been around for 11 years now, and we've been advocating for safe biking and walking infrastructure. And we've done some good things. One was uh, building the Lakeview Link to connect Lakeview Middle School and the Momentum Bike Club youth to the Swamp Rabbit Trail. They previously had to walk their bikes down West Blue Ridge Drive and next to all the traffic. It was a great first fundraising project for us, for us and we're very proud of that. Yeah, I will say, so first, let's talk about the Swamp Rabbit Trail. When the Swamp Rabbit Trail arrived, it gave so many new opportunities for people to walk and cycle. It's, it's been an amazing success factor. In fact, you notice the trail counters. Uh, our nonprofit donated trail counters, uh, both to Traveler's Rest and first to the City of Greenville. And the city has now put in three new counters without displays. And uh, the city is coming up with the idea that we have two million people a year using the Swamp Rabbit Trail from the new data. Yeah. They, they put, recently put that on social media. It's amazing. It, it really is. And you get out there on the Swamp Rabbit Trail, and uh, I ride. Um, I wouldn't call myself a cyclist, but but I ride my bike, and um, when I'm on the trail, it's just amazing to see the amount of people that are out there just enjoying the weather. Then, all these communities that can be connected to the trail are wanting to be connected, exactly. and that's you're playing a massive role in that. Well, it's it's just so good, and and, and plus it's the economic engine. We did some some data study of where the people come from from the trail, and we wrote. We wrote an opinion piece about that. Of, of all these people come to Greenville to ride the Swamp Rabbit Trail, and yeah. they spend money. It's like it's almost like you know the, the Chamber of Commerce loves it. <laughs> yeah, and there's so many businesses that want to locate along the trail. Absolutely. I mean, look at what happened with the Swamp Rabbit Cafe, the greatest, the greatest success story ever, and what that spawned along Hampton Avenue. All those apartments wouldn't have been built. Yeah had our friends at the Swamp Rabbit Cafe not been so successful. It just shows you what happens when you build access for it's safe for people on bikes and on foot. Yeah, and there are many cyclists, of course, that are on the road as well. Safety is something that you, uh, very important for you, and to get the word out about. Well, you know, I, the reason I became an advocate is back in 2010, I was riding my bike in Malden on, on Holland Road, and a distracted driver turned into me. I wound up a, a week in the hospital with a punctured lung, separated shoulder surgery, and that's when I first said, I gotta do something about this. Yeah. And the roads, you know, all the increasing distracted drivers we see, you know, the, the generation that's grown up on their phones, they don't wanna put it down. And it, it, it is one of the most difficult problems we have is, is the car is always going to win against the bicyclist. Mm -hmm. So no easy answers for that. Yeah. So walk me through this. So for the people at home who are watching this right now, when they are driving their car and they're coming up and there's a group of cyclists in front of them, what do they do? Because there's that fear of, I don't want to scare them, but I need to go around them, but should I go around them? And so well, what do you say we they do? They need to be a little patient. You know, we, we have group rides and the spinners will talk about their rides and they, they announce the rules before every group ride that they do. And the law says you can be too abreast. And you know, you got some narrow roads and, and the cyclists don't go as fast as the cars. So, you know, you just want people to be a little courteous, respect the people out there riding for transportation or recreation, True. either way. These people have a right to the road by the state law. So you need to ask, ask motorists to be a, respectful of people on bikes. So you pack patience, number one. And then, is it safe to go around? If there's room, you, you need to watch. I mean, I've, I've been on group rides years ago where, you know, we unfortunately we might be three wide, and yeah. then you'll see people 
passing the yellow line and going to over in oncoming traffic and then zooming in in front of the group ride. Yeah. And it's that's a very scary situation. Do you think uh, because of the amount of cyclists in our area and the passion for cycling in this area, do you think more and more drivers are understanding? Well, hopefully, I, I, I'll let I'll let the, I'll let our spinners talk about their group rides and what they see. But for you, making sure they know and understand the safety. That's the key. And and for myself, I don't ride on the roads very much anymore. I'm a swamp rabbit trail rider <laughs> because just having been hit, yeah, it just takes one. You know, we we post on social media signs of being knocked down all the time, right at major intersections of the swamp rabbit trail. And I talked to DOT about it. and says, well, they're knocking down signs every day. I'm I'm, I'm a mutant to it, is what DOT people yeah. tell me. And so, you know, it, I think it's become increasingly dangerous uh, in certainly in the past few years, and I'm not sure what everybody else thinks, but I, I, that's my perception. And you are bike walk, so let's make sure we talk about the walk part well, as well. Well, walking is, you know, you look at, at, at what the city of Greenville has done for us. It, it look at the multi-youth path mm -hmm. they put on Verde Boulevard. Yeah. You look at, at what they did at Unity Park, right? South Hudson Street, right? And they figured out that we need safe places to walk as well as ride a bike. And of course, when you have walkers and bikers on the same path, then you still have trail etiquette issues, yeah. which is which is constant <laughs> because we have dog walkers, we have people with earphones, we have people looking at <laughs> the phones, and there's always competition about, yeah. you know, who's in, who has the right of way, and you know, you say on your left, please, and then you have people that don't understand what that means, and they move to the left, and yeah. it, it's a difficult problem, and it's a worldwide problem on multi-youth trails. Yeah. I, I've researched that. Everybody around the world says, you're not going to solve this. People are people. Exactly, exactly. So, well, thank you very much for being here. It was a great conversation, and the conversation continues. Straight ahead, we'll speak to two leaders of the Greenville Spinners about opportunities for cyclists.